Good afternoon, everyone. Hope you're doing great today. We're going to be going on to the next lesson right away, but I want to spend a few minutes going over what we learned yesterday in class because the basic ideas behind what you have to do to simplify a rational expression are basically the same as the ideas behind what we have to do when we're working on multiplying rational expressions, which is what we're going to be doing today. Bottom line, what we did yesterday is very important that you understand because you have to continue with it today. So from yesterday, if I give you a single rational expression, you have to factor everything first, and then you cancel factors that are common to a denominator and a numerator, and non-permissible values, which are the values of the variables that make the denominator zero, which is not allowed, those numbers are found prior to canceling. So to pick a particular example here, oh, let's take 8c. That looks like a good one. If I have 8c, which is b squared plus 2b minus 24, and this is divided by 2b squared minus 72, the first step, of course, is to factor everything entirely. The numerator of this is a quadratic trinomial with a coefficient of the quadratic term of 1. So you're looking here at numbers that multiply to give negative 24, but add to give positive 2. That would be 6 and negative 4. The 2b squared minus 72, I can factor a 2 out and get b squared minus 36, which you should be fairly happy about because b squared minus 36 is a difference of squares. What does this factor into? b plus 6 on the top, b minus 4 on the bottom, or also on the top, rather. On the bottom, we have 2, and then we factor the difference of squares as b plus 6 and b minus 6. So before we do any canceling, I'll remind you that the non-permissible values are found before you cancel. So negative 6 is a value that would make b plus 6 0. So b is not allowed to be negative 6. Positive 6 is a value of b that would make b minus 6 0. So that's not allowed. Now we can cancel, and whatever we have left is the answer. So the answer to this question is b minus 4 over 2 times b minus 6 with those restrictions that b cannot equal to 6 or negative 6. Well, now let's get started on today's lesson. So this is lesson 6.2. Hopefully you're already on that page, but if you're looking for a page number, 6.2 is on page 4 of your unit handout. We're going to be looking at finding non-permissible values for rational expressions that have multiple variables, and we're going to be multiplying rational expressions and continuing to work with non-permissible values. The most important aspect of today's lesson is the second bullet. The first bullet is important. We have to learn it, but in the big scheme of things, it's not nearly as important as the second bullet. With that said, let's get that first bullet out of the way. I have a rational expression here of 16x squared minus 9y squared over 8x minus 6y. And what makes this rational expression different than any of the ones we've seen so far is that it's not just a rational expression with x's. And it's not just a rational expression with y's. It contains x's and y's. So the first question is, which expression represents the non-permissible values of x? Well. I want to go back to a question that I did a few minutes ago. This one here. And when I went from, I'll just pick on the b minus 6 in the denominator. When I went from the b minus 6 to the b is not equal to 6, I did that basically by inspection. I just looked at it and said, you know what, b cannot equal to 6. But the fact of the matter is there's a mathematical procedure involved in that. And the procedure is we take that factor and we say that factor is not equal to 0 and we rearrange for that variable. And that gives us b is not equal to 6. Well, let's do the same thing 
in this first example, part A, it says, what is the expression that represents the non-permissible values for x? Well, the denominator is 8x minus 6y, and that is not allowed to be equal to 0. Well, look, a minute ago, if we had b minus 6 is not allowed to equal 0, we rearrange that for b to find out what b is not allowed to be. Well, here, we're going to rearrange this statement on the left-hand side for x. So I'm going to add 6y to both sides first. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 8. And 6 over 8 can be simplified to 3 over 4. So the answer to this question is x is not allowed to be 3 quarters y. And what's really crucial here, and you're going to have to think carefully on this, is that I'm not telling you that there's a certain number that x is not allowed to be. I'm telling you that the value that x is not allowed to be depends on what y is. So, for example, if y is 12, x is not allowed to be 3 quarters of 12. x would not be allowed to be 3 quarters of of 12. Well, 3 quarters of 12, and you can work this out. A quarter of 12 is 3. 3 of those is 9, is 9. So if y is 12, x is not allowed to be 9. It can be any other number. If y is 12, x can be 9.1. If y is 12, x can be 0. But if y is 12, x cannot be 9. It's almost as though well, not almost, what it is, exactly is, is that 9 for x and 12 for y are a non-permissible pair of numbers. If x is 9 and y is 12, that can't happen. But on the other hand, if y is 36, then what is x not allowed to be? x is not allowed to be 3 quarters of 36, and I believe 3 quarters of 36 is 27. It is. So if y is 36, x is not allowed to be 27. If y is 36, x can be any other number in the universe. It just can't be 27. Anyway, this is our answer to A. Simplify the rational expression. So I've rewritten it here just so that I can see it. Well, the numerator is a difference of squares. 16x squared is a perfect square of 4x. 9y squared is a perfect square of 3y. So this is what the numerator factors into. On the bottom, we can factor out a 2 and have 4x minus 3y. Oh, well, that's kind of convenient because the 4x minus 3y's are now factors that are common on the top and the bottom. So this expression simplifies to 4x plus 3y over 2. Of course, that is not a correct answer. We still need to say that x is not equal to 3 quarters of y. It doesn't matter that that factor with the x's and y's in the denominator canceled and is gone. We still need to include it. C, what is the non-permissible value for y if x is 2.4? Well, we have this x is not equal to 3 quarters y statement. I can also read it the other way, that 3 quarters y can't equal x. There's nothing special about x other than I've rearranged this for x. So I can put 2.4 in here and solve this for y. I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by 4 to get rid of that 4 in the denominator. And I'm going to get, I believe, 9.6 is not equal to 3y. So I can divide both sides by 3 and get y is not equal to 3.2. And it's getting a little late in the day for me. I better just double check all of my numbers here. 4 times 2.4 
is in fact 9.6, 9.6 divided by 3, we're good. So the non-permissible value for y is 3.2. Is this a pair of numbers? X equals 1.5 and Y equals 2.8. Is that a pair of numbers that are allowed? And if so, what is the rational expression equal to? Well, let me write down what this rational expression was again. I'll just copy it. First of all, there's nothing to prevent me from putting 1.5 in for x and 2.8 in for y. But I have to look at this first to find out if I'm allowed to do that. So let's find out. x is not allowed to be 3 quarters of y, and y is 2.8. So let's figure out on our calculators right now for me, please, what 3 quarters of 2.8 is. That ought to be enough time. I'm thinking it's 2.1, but again, I don't have your faces to look at to confirm that, so I better just double check. 0.75 times 2.8, 2.1. Well, that's allowed. As long as we don't get 1.5, that's allowed. If x is 2.8, the only value of, pardon me, let me start again. If y is 2.8, the only value of x that isn't allowed is 2.1. So we are allowed to put those numbers in. We're going to have 4 times 1.5 plus 3 times 2.8 divided by 2. Take a minute and work that out. I want to say 7.2, but again, I better just double check. 1.5 times 4 plus 2.8 times 3 divided by 2, yeah, 7.2. So this works out to 7.2. And that brings us to a conclusion to the first part of this lesson, which again is not that important. I mean, everything we learn is important. If it weren't important, we wouldn't learn it. I wouldn't teach it. But in the big scheme of things, where I rank this in importance is pretty close to the bottom. Let's talk now about multiplying rational expressions, which is the meat of this lesson. When you think back to junior high school and learning about fractions, you might have nightmares dealing with all kinds of algebra tiles and stuff. But the bottom line is, in the end, hopefully you remember that when you multiply fractions or divide fractions, it was much simpler than adding or subtracting. And the same thing is true here with rational expressions. The rules that you use for multiplying fractions that have numbers in them are the same as the rules for multiplying rational expressions that have numbers and variables in them. As a warm-up, let's multiply 30 over 12 by 14 over 21 without using a calculator and getting it in simplified form. Remember that in this entire unit, the key to success in everything is factoring first. So we're going to factor all of these numbers. 30 is 3 times 10, and 10 is 2 times 5. So with a little bit of thought, you should understand 30 is 3 times 2 times 5. 12, on the other hand, is 3 times 4, and 4 is 2 times 2. So 30 over 12 is 3 times 2 times 5 over 3 times 2 times 2. Multiplied by 14 is 2 times 7 over 21 is 3 times 7. Now, the rule for multiplying fractions is that you multiply across the top and you multiply across the bottom. So what we end up with is a single fraction, 3 times 2 times 5 times 2 times 7 over 3 
times 2 times 2 times 3 times 7. And I better just double check to make sure that I wrote all those numbers down correctly. I, I think it's fine. But we, and we talked about this yesterday. Fractions can be simplified by canceling a factor if it's on the top and the bottom. So there's a 3 and a 3, there's a 2 and a 2, there's a 7 and a 7, and there's another 2 and another 2. All we're left with is 5 over 3. Okay. So this is apparently equal to 5 over 3. Let's just confirm that with our calculator. I'm going to put in in brackets 30 divided by 12. Close the brackets. I'm going to multiply that by in brackets 14 divided by 21. 30 over 12 times 14 over 21 is this number. And if I convert it to a fraction, that's 5 thirds. Okay? The thing I want to point out to you, and it's where we're going with this, is that we started off having a fraction multiplied by another fraction. We started off with two fractions, but we turned it into one fraction. I'll come back to that idea in a bit. Let's try one more. 4 fifteenths times 9 sixteenths. Well, 4 is 2 times 2. Fifteen is 3 times 5. Times 9 is 3 times 3. And 16 is a whopping 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Because 16 is 4 times 4. Now, you know, it's, it's difficult sometimes to teach on video because I can't look you in the eyes and try to elicit a, an answer out of you. But I want everybody to think of this question. Am I allowed to do this? Am I allowed to cancel this 3 with this 3 even though they're in different fractions? And if I am, am I allowed to cancel, say, this 2 with this 2? I suppose if I can cancel the threes, there's no reason why I couldn't cancel the twos. The answer to that question is yes, I can cancel them. Because ultimately, when you multiply these two fractions together, it really is going to only be one fraction. Because you multiply across the top and you multiply across the bottom. So you're allowed to cancel a factor on the top anywhere with a factor on the bottom anywhere as long as you're multiplying. And it looks as though that's all that cancels. So what do I have left on the top? I have 2 times 3 on the top. And on the bottom, I have 5 times 2 cubed, which is 8. Oh, there was another 2. My mistake. There's another 2 here. I'll just use a different color. This 2 and this 2 cancels. Sorry about that. So we had a 3 on the top and the bottom. We had a 2 on the top and the bottom and an additional 2 on the top and the bottom. So all we have left in the numerator is 3. And in the denominator, we have 5 times 2 times 2, which is 20. Let's confirm that on our calculator in brackets 4 over 15 multiplied by in brackets 9 over 16. You might wonder why I'm worried about brackets here. They may not always be necessary, but they're not a bad idea because sometimes they are necessary. What do I get? 0.15. Well, that's 3 over 15. Or sorry, that's 3 over 20, rather. All right. So notice that when we multiply fractions, we cancel a factor in any numerator with the same factor in any denominator. We're going to do the same thing with rational expressions. Rational expressions are fractions. We canceled factors in these fractions. We're going to cancel factors in these fractions. So because I'm multiplying here, I could write this entire thing as one fraction. And I have 30. And I have x squared, which is x times x. And I have a y. And I have 33. And I have a z times z times z.
And on the bottom, I have an 11, and I have a z times a z, and I have a 5, and I have an x. Now, first of all, I hope everybody is clear that I should not have to write 33 as 3 times 11 on the top, and I should not have to write 30 as, I guess 30 would be 5 times 6 or 5 times 2 times 3. So I'm not breaking those numbers down. I don't think I really need to. The point is, in terms of canceling, I've got an x here and here, a z here and here, a z here and here. No y's. I only have one y in the whole thing. I have 33 over 11, which gives me 3. I have 30 over 5, which is 6. So on the top, I have 6 times 3, which is 18. My final answer here will be 18. And what is left? I have an x in the numerator. I have a y in the numerator. I have a z in the numerator. I don't have anything else. So I'm just going to double check. These monomial ones are actually trickier than you think they should be. But I have one x left, I have one y left, I have one z left, they're all in the numerator. 33 over 11 is 3, 30 over 8 is 6. This is good. We are asked as well to state the non-permissible values. x is not equal to 0 and z is not equal to 0. I'm just going to pause there and ask you to think about while you're finishing writing this down, why is it that x is not equal to 0 and z is not equal to 0? And the answer is because both x and z are in the denominator of the original expression. Let's try another one. Okay, so we have to multiply these two together, but you're going to need to factor everything first. So the rest of this lesson, just like most of the unit, is an exercise in factoring, really. That second rational expression is x plus 3 on x plus 5, and the other two are factorable. So notice I've put them both together as a single rational expression x squared plus 7x plus 10 factors into x plus 2, x plus 5. Pretty basic stuff. Little more thought going into the bottom of that first expression. Hopefully you will appreciate that it's going to be x minus 2, x plus 3, because 3 plus 2, 3 plus negative 2 rather, will give you that 1, and 3 times the 2 will give you the negative 6. All right. We can stop right here and say x is not equal to negative 3, to positive 2, and to negative 5. And then we can cancel. What can we cancel? The x plus 5s and the x plus 3s. We're left with x plus 2 over x minus 2, and that's it. One factor on the top that's different than the factor on the bottom. Oh, smoky. Well, we have a lot of factoring to do here. I know that this becomes additionally difficult because there are x's and y's, but just play along for a second and pretend that that top numerator of the first rational expression, let's pretend that there are no y's that it is, in fact, x squared plus 5x plus 6. That's like taking candy from a tired baby. That's x plus 2 and x plus 3. OK, but now let's come back to reality. We didn't want 2 and 3 because we have to multiply them to get 6y squared. All we have to do to fix this is squeak in a y in each of those places. And I would ask everybody right now to think about what would happen if you FOIL that out. 
will you get an x squared? Hopefully you're nodding to yourself or to your neighbor. Yes, you would. Will you get 6y squared? Well, yeah. Will you get 5xy? Well, your inner will be 2xy. Your outer will be 3xy. So yes, you get 6, uh, sorry, 5xy. The idea behind factoring these is you're just going to have x's and y's. That's the only thing that's different. You're still going to be putting the numbers in. What two numbers multiply to give 10 and add to give 7? 5 and 2. What two numbers what two numbers multiply to give 5? and add to give 6. Well, that would be 1y and 5y. And the last one, what two numbers multiply to give negative 3 and add to give positive 2? That would be positive 3 and negative 1. And at this point in time, you should probably just take a breather and double check all of those by foiling them out. I'm going to do so in my head silently, you can do so as well. It's fine now. I think that's good. So what can we cancel? We can cancel an x plus 2y. We can cancel an x plus 3y. We can cancel an x plus 5y. And the only things we have left are x plus y on the top, x minus y on the bottom. And I'm not going to worry about non-permissible values for this one. That's not the focus of the lesson that we're in right now. And that's it. That's your answer. All right, we have one more to go. Got a lot of factoring to do here. This is all going to be factoring by inspection or trial and error. When you have a quadratic whose leading term has a coefficient of 6, it's most likely 3 and 2. With the 5 at the end, it must be 5 and 1. If I put the 5 here, that's going to give me 15r on the outside. And I put the 1 here, that's 2r on the inside. That's good. I want negative 13r, so I need to get negative 15r out of that. Double check that before we go on. That gives us negative 13r, and all of the other terms are correct. Same thing here, 3r and 2r. It's got to be 1 and 1. I think if this is plus, we're going to get 2r in the middle. If this is minus, we get negative 3r on the outside which adds to give negative r, which is what we want, which is good. Then we have, again, I'm going to go with 3r and 2r. If you try to put a 2 here and here, then what ends up happening is you create a common factor of 2 in this binomial. And there is no common factor of 2 up here, which means if it's 3r and 2r, it can't be 2 and 2 for the 4. It must be 4 and 1. And the 1 has to go with the 2. I can't put a 4 with the 2 because, again, I will create a common factor of 2. And this will be 4. This time, my outer is 3r and my inner is 8r. I want 5r, so the 8r must be positive. That'll do it. I'm going to do the 8r squared minus 50 on the side here just for one step. I can take a 2 out and have 4r squared minus 25. That's a difference of squares, so I get 2 times 2r plus 5 times 2r minus 5. All right, we're ready to cancel. Well, non-permissible values. Let's do non-permissible values first, get them out of the way r is not equal to 5 over 2. 
because that factor of 2r minus 5 cannot equal 0. So you rearrange it to get that. r is not equal to negative 5 over 2. Again, set this factor this time equal to 0 and rearrange it. Over here, r will not be equal to 1 over 2. And r will not be equal to negative 1 third. Those are our four non-permissible values. All right, now let's cancel. I see a 2r minus 1 on the top and the bottom. I see a 2r minus 5 on the top and the bottom. I see a 3r plus 1 on the top and the bottom. Not much left. Not much survived that. 3r plus 4 over 2 times 2r plus 5. So that's our answer, and those are the non-permissible values. In other parts of the course, if you thought that you needed lots of practice to get better, that doesn't compare at all to the amount of practice I think you need in this unit. We still, we're just early on here. We haven't talked about dividing rational expressions or adding them or solving equations. All we're talking about so far is simplifying and multiplying. So you need lots of practice with this. Here's your assignment, page 327 of your textbook, 1, 2, and 7. And also, even though it's not in your handout, it's not typed out there, I would like you to do as well, page 352, number 9. I hope that that lesson went okay, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day and a fantastic weekend. Look forward to seeing everybody on Monday. Take care.